fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! There were but four covered wagons in the train about to start westward from the small Ohio town. One of the wagons carried only women, unmarried women all, except for Amy Smith, the leader's wife. The spinsters were making the perilous trip, hoping that a new and happier life and perhaps a husband, awaited them at the end of the journey. Of all the women, Melvina Powell had been the most enthusiastic. But now, as the last-minute preparations were completed, she was in a quandary. She stood beside the wagon and spoke to Amy Smith. Amy, I do declare I don't know what to do. It may be the greatest mistake of my life, going away like this. But, Melvina, I thought you couldn't wait to get away from here. What's the matter? Has something happened? Yes. Amy, Caleb Henry smiled at me this morning. He did? Yes. Isn't that thrilling? Mrs. Smith, Melvina, aren't you going with us? We're ready to start. I'm going, Jasper. I am not sure about Melvina, though. Caleb Henry smiled at her this morning. He's smiling at everyone this morning. Mm. The fool galoot up and popped the question to Nellie Sprague last night, and she accepted him. What? Yeah. Oh. Yes, he's hooked. And happy about it. Poor lost soul. He... T- uh. Hey, Melvina, where you going? Well, I'm getting into the wagon. Where do you suppose? Well, Amy, don't be standing there wasting time. Amy! Poor Melvina. She was ready to stay on here merely because Caleb Henry smiled at her. She's missed out again. Well, in this case, a miss is as good as a smile. Jasper, what's holding you back there? Nothing, Jake. We're all set now. You can start them rolling. All right. Get up there. Come on now. Hey! With Jacob Smith driving the lead wagon, the train set out on the road for whatever fortune beckoned in the west. Four weeks later, the wagon train was in the heart of the West. But somewhere it had strayed from the main trail and now was in a spot unknown to Jacob Smith and Jasper Jennings. While the members of the party slept or stood guard, the two leaders sat around the campfire studying a map. Jasper, I gave you the map and let you lead the way because I thought you could do it. Yes, thought I could myself, Jacob, but it's a homemade map and 
Well, we're not lost. Uh, perhaps not, but we're off the main trail and getting higher into the mountains. Jasper, we'll find ourselves in trouble unless some... Bless me, it's thunder. And lightning, too. Look at it. Who'd have thought it? What oh, a storm. Mentions. It's terrible. Coming up here now. It didn't look like it was going it's to storm. It's a storm, and yeah. I'm afraid of lightning. I'm afraid, Jasper. Hold oh, me. Oh, oh, it's starting to rain. All right, everyone, we're in for a storm. Hitch those horses tight to the wagons and tie the canvas so the rain won't get inside. Pete, right, Henry, cover supplies. Oh, no. Help me with these horses. Come on. Jasper, oh, this is awful. What am I going to do? You're going to drown if you don't get into your wagon. Amy, oh. take her away. Take her away. Oh. <laughs> the storm continued throughout the next day, and the day after that again. But in spite of it, the wagon train rolled on. Supplies were running low, and Jacob Smith wanted to replenish them at the next town they'd come to. But on the third day, with the storm still raging, and with the country around them seemingly wilder than it had been, Smith began to worry. The rain fell in a torrent, and the days continued dark except for occasional streaks of lightning. Amy Smith had joined her husband's wagon on the third day. Now, as the lead wagon creaked through the deep mud, Amy, from inside, spoke through the slit in the canvas to her husband. Jacob, you said yesterday we would reach a town by evening. Aren't we near it yet? Get up there. Come on, up, up. Get on. Amy, I don't have any idea where we are. You're still on some sort of a trail, but it's not the main one. It's getting colder, too, Jacob. That's because we're getting higher into the mountains. It's Jasper's fault. Amy, Amy, to... hush, hush. Say nothing against Jasper. It's not his fault. If the storm hadn't come, we'd have located the main trail again and been all right. We didn't think the storm would continue this long. But what are we going to do? Keep moving on until we reach some place where we can get food. Or until the mud box us down. Come on now, up! Get up there! Hey, High in the hills in a secluded cabin miles to the south of the town of Last Chance, a man stood removing his rain-soaked coat and throwing it on the floor. Uh, it's so clean through. Feels as if it weighs a ton. Roscoe Sterling, an accepted pillar of respectability in the town of Last Chance, and one of its few businessmen spoke to two tough-looking men seated at a table, smoking and playing cards. A taller man, Dewey Boswell, took the last card trick from squinty-eyed Case Adams, then pushed back his chair and got to his feet as he spoke to Sterling. Boss, we're sure glad you got here. How'd it go? Uh, sure, Clark. I uh, told him I couldn't get to his bank today because I had to go out to a ranch, so storm or not, he's going to meet me at the bank tonight at 9 o'clock. Then he'll give me the documents he's been minding for me. <laughs> documents? It's funny. Hey, boss, we'll carry out the job as we planned it? Yes. You two be waiting behind the bank. When I get inside with Clark, I'll open the door for you. Then you come in and take the money. That evening at 9 o'clock, Roscoe Sterling went to the bank with its president, George Clark. Clark opened the safe laughingly. Well, I'll have you know, Mr. Sterling, you're one of the few men in last chance I'd do this for. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you did it for me. So are we. Up uh, with your hands. Well, take that money, Parson. You will not. I'll not let you. Here's the gun. Grab it. Here, give me that gun. No, oh, I'm hit. Parson, oh. shot doing it. And I'll shoot you, too. No, you'll not, Clark. Uh, Sterling, you not one of them. Yes, Clark, I am. And we want that money. Let me have it. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Yeah, boss, you knocked him cold with that gun, bud. He'll be out for hours. Yeah. Here's a pouch. Hold on a second. Louis, uh, how are you? Where were you hit? Only in the shoulder. It's not bad. Help me out of here. I'll be all right. You'll have to come with us, boss. I'll take the money and lead the way out the rear door. We'll help Dewey up to the cabin. Yeah. Case Adams helped the wounded Dewey Boswell to their horses, which they'd left at the edge of the woods at the rear of the bank. Roscoe Sterling, who had left his horse in a stable and been on foot when he met George Clark, walked to the front of the building and, acting casual, took the latter's horse. Dewey, Case. Here we are, boss. Back here. Are you all right, Dewey? Oh, I'm bleeding some. Torn my shirt and tied the wound a bit. I'll be all right. Yeah, let's get out of here. But listen, when we get to the stream, walk your horses down through the water until we're opposite Saddle Rock. When we come out on the other side, our horses will be walking on sleet covered ground. The rain will wash away hoof prints anyway. Then get started. Right. Hit it, man. Hit it, hit it. The trio of crooks forded the stream at Saddle Rock. A few miles farther on, they crossed the main trail and made their way up the hills to their cabin hideout. Oh, 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 oh. 
They entered the cabin, placed the money pouch in a corner, and then dressed the wound in Dewey Boswell's shoulder. Does it feel all right now, Dewey? Yeah, yeah, it hurts a little, but not much. Then let's get a few hours sleep. It'll be quite a while yet before they find Clark. Then they'll be after us. <laughs> but they'll never find this place. <laughs> yeah, they'll be riding along the main trail after us, to the east or west. Nobody ever comes up here. But a few hours after dawn, when the crooks had awakened, they heard horses somewhere outside. Hey, listen. You hear that? Get your guns ready. You stay back. I'll look through the window. It must be a posse. They found Clark and picked up our trail. Boss, Case. Holy mackerel, look out the window. Uh, what is it doing? Is it the sheriff? Boss, look, it's a wagon train. Four wagons. Oh, you're crazy. What would a wagon train be doing? But Dewey, it is. You're right. Sure. Look it. The wagons are stopping, too. They see this place. Uh, this is unbelievable. The wagon's up here so far from the main trail. I never heard of anything like this before. Maybe they're heading for the pass that takes them down into Furnace Valley. The desert? Don't be crazy. Boss, there's a couple of hombres getting ready to come up here. We can't let them. You two stay here. I'll handle this. I'll find out what it's all about. Roscoe Sterling, affecting geniality, walked to where Jacob Smith and Jasper Jennings huddled before approaching the cabin. He introduced himself, and they, in turn, revealed their identity and their dilemma. Somehow, somewhere three days ago, we lost our way. It was my fault. I, I got the map mixed up. Dark, it was not your fault, Jasper, but that doesn't matter now. Mr. Sterling, our supplies are low, very low. And we're not sure how to get to the main road or to any town where we might get supplies. Is there a town near? There must be. Well, there's a... <coughs> a gentleman named... I and my companions were about to leave. Uh, companions? Uh, two friends. They're, uh, they're prospectors. They're... Yes, prospectors. Uh, the gentlemen, uh, I think I may be able to give you every assistance you need. That is, if you let me. Mr. Sterling, when we saw this cabin a few minutes ago, we had some hope. But now we feel as if we've been delivered from heaven knows what fate. Jacob's right. We'll not only let you help, we'll uh, kind of beg for yes. it. Then stay here. I'll not be long. We'll join you in a few minutes. Inside the cabin, Roscoe Sterling grinned as he detailed the emigrant's plight and also the plan he had in mind. Yeah, they haven't the faintest idea where they're going. So, we go with them. We're down to the main trail, boss. That'll be dangerous. Oh, sure, we can hide in the wagons like you just said. We can even pretend to be part of the bunch that's traveling with them. But the sheriff and his posse should be looking for us by now, and if we... Well, it's not safe, boss. After seeing how that wagon train found its way here, I'm not so sure this is the perfect hideout after all. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Besides, I didn't say we'd take the main trail. We'll go on with them from here along the same way they're heading. You mean we go to Furnace Canyon in the desert? If necessary, yes. We'll tie our horses behind their wagons and we'll travel inside. And when we get to the desert, then what? Will we leave them stranded in Furnace Canyon? Why not? We'll take our horses and then ride up to Devil's Crater and through the cut to safety, miles and miles away from here. <laughs> Come on. When the crooks heard of a wagon with only women in it, they placed the money pouch there. Even if we stopped, no one would ever look among a lot of females for the loot. A short time later, the wagon train started off once more. Each of the bandits rode in a separate wagon. Roscoe Sterling, seated beside Jacob Smith in the lead wagon, had no thought of the sheriff and his posse, who, having found George Clark's body, were now on the trail searching. Instead, Sterling talked pleasantly. This isn't the best trail in the world. It's better on wagons, as you see. But before we're finished, I'll get you places, Mr. Smith. Believe me. Fine, fine. <laughs> get up there. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Howell to continue. A few miles to the other side of the main trail, but in a spot higher than the path on which the wagon train was traveling, two men studied the surrounding country. The Lone Ranger wiped his powerful field glasses and scanned the distant horizon, while Tonto peered through his at the road below. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger's glasses centered on one point. Tonto, lay your glasses on the spot where I'm pointing. Okay, Mr. Ah, what wagon train do up there? I'd like the answer to that myself. Trail where wagons go. Not big. Not only that, it leads to the desert. Furnace Valley. Maybe them lost. Many times wagons get lost. That wouldn't be hard in this part of the country during weather like this. If them lost, that bad. Very bad, Toto. We'll ride and overtake them. Monsieur! Lone Ranger and Tonto guided their horses through brush and down steep inclines, then straightened out at the bottom of a hill and started across the main trail. But even before they heard the beat of horses' hooves in the distance, they heard shots and the sound of bullets traveling close to them, landing in the foliage beyond. The masked man and Indian wheeled their horses, seeking shelter behind the roadside underbrush. Oh, no, oh, he's 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 Get your gun ready, Tonto. Ah. Both men raised their guns, then lowered them again as they saw, even through the heavy rain, the shining badges on the jackets of the first horsemen to approach. <laughs> Sheriff Art Chatham led the way to where the two men emerged from the underbrush. All right, you all brave. Up with your hands. Drop those guns. Hello, Sheriff Chatham. <laughs> well, I'll be swiggered. I didn't see the mask, the way the rain's coming down. Didn't even see Silver as we were riding towards you. Silver? He's wearing a mask. And an Indian's with him. The Lone Ranger had helped Sheriff Chatham in the past, and the lawman introduced the masked man and Tonto to his deputies. Then he told the story of the bank robbery and George Clark's murder. He concluded... Yeah, we may be on a wild goose chase for all we know, but we're sure one of them was shot. We picked up some hoof prints in the woods in back of the bank. Had they petered out down by the stream. So we have a few men working each side of the stream, some heading east and the others west. The Lone Ranger told of sighting the wagon train and the reasons he and Tonto were on their way to intercept it. The sheriff nodded his head. That's a good idea. They must be lost or they wouldn't be traveling up those hills. Well, here's hoping you set them right. And here's hoping you catch your murderers, Sheriff. Maybe you'll be able to help us after you finish what you're doing. All right, boys, let's get started again. All right, come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto continued onward and up into the hills. It was some time later when they caught sight of the four wagons rolling through hub-deep mud. There they are, Tonto. They ride to the lead wagon. Come on, fill them! Roscoe Sterling, sitting next to Jacob Smith in the driver's seat, was the first to see the masked man and Indian approaching. He had heard of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, so when he noticed that the masked man was riding a giant white horse, a sudden cold terror gripped him, but he regained control of himself as he pulled his hat low over his eyes and spoke to the train leader. Hey, Smith, look what's coming. We're going to be held up. Come on, start shooting. No, no, don't shoot. Ho, ho, ho. Sterling be ride in peace and use no guns unless we're forced to. That is our way of life. Please put away your gun. Two men could not hold up all of us. Well, I'll be... Yeah, that... Hi there. Where are you heading? We're heading for Shut the... up. Let me handle this. What do you care? Because I'd like to help you. You're strangers in these parts, aren't you? Yeah, we are from Ohio. This is the first yeah, time... Leave us alone, eh? Don't be frightened by this mask. I'm not an outlaw. How about our friend? Ah, more friends. That is nice. You realize you're far off the main trail, don't you? Yeah, we'll find it. We're skirting around Furnace Canyon and up to Devil's Crater. We'll hit the main trail again after we've gone through the cut beyond the crater. Oh. You say this is your first trip out this way? Yes, for us yeah, it keep is. Keep quiet. Yes, yeah, first time for all of us. We're all from Ohio. But you but speak and I'll plug you. We uh, were lost for a while, but we're all right again. We, we don't need help. Thanks, just the same. Well, I tell him to get you. Why are you putting back? We don't need you. All right. Thought I might be able to help. Come on, Tonto. I'll get out of here. Come on, up, scout! The old ranger and Tonto turned and galloped away in the direction from which they had come. When they had traveled a short distance, 
The Lone Ranger signaled to stop. Oh, 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 then spoke to Tonto. Tonto, something was wrong back there. Uh, somebody tell lie. You noticed that too? Uh, one man say nobody come this way before. And the other one mentioned Furnace Canyon, Devil's Crater, and the Cut, which is 30 miles beyond there. Uh, only Indians know that. Indians or men very familiar with this territory. Another thing, the man who mentioned those places wasn't dressed like the rest of them. No. Them looked like farmers. And he looked like a prosperous westerner or... Hello. Okay, Masabi. I have a hunch that man doesn't want the wagons to get onto the main road. Oh. You think maybe him one man sheriff looked for? I said it's a hunch. I'm going to play it. Hello, you ride back to the main trail and look for Sheriff Chatham and his men. Ask them to please come up this way and follow after that wagon train. Uh, and what you do, Kimasabi? I'm riding back to that wagon train, Toto. I want to find out how good my hunch is. The Lone Ranger rode back through the brush and then dismounted. Oh, oh, easy. He found a spot where he, unseen, could see and hear the conversation that was taking place. Unaware that anyone was watching, the members of the wagon train gathered around Jacob Smith and the stranger, Roscoe Sterling. They had come to learn about the masked man who'd stopped the train. But now, instead, they heard the usually quiet Smith speaking angrily to Sterling. And I see no reason why you said what you did to the masked man. I think he sincerely wanted to help us. But you, and I still cannot understand this, you placed a gun against my back and said you would use it if I did not send him away. Why, Mr. Sterling? Because he was a hold-up man, that's why. He was probably trying to lead us into an ambush. If he was a hold-up man, why didn't you keep your gun ready for him instead of using it on uh, me? What does it matter? Just say I was excited and afraid of being held up. I don't blame you, mister, what with all that money you're carrying. What, what did you say? Well, you don't have to jump at me like that, mister. I was talking about all that money you have in the pouch. Case, I... what does this mean? How does this woman know about the money? Why, I I'm not talking I... to you. Keep quiet. Well, I Case, never... did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Let me throw it. Oh, Let right. me throw it. Yeah, yeah, boss, I did. It's nothing. You told me to put the parts in the wagon where the ladies were on account of nobody be likely to search for it. That's uh, enough. Hmm. If you ask me, I think you stole the money. What? What do you mean, you pinched nose? Oh, don't yeah, let yeah. go of me. Take your hands uh, off that girl. Oh, oh what? Oh, uh, keep out of this. Yes, you blithering fool. Yeah. Amy, I'm sorry, folks. Get away from here, Case. Amy, I'm sorry, folks. It's all a mistake here. Let's uh, get back to the wagon. I'm huh? the one who'll give the orders, Mr. Sterling. Jasper, are you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Jacob, but... But where's that... Jasper, we'll have none of that. Well, I'll handle matters. Mr. Sterling, we accepted your offer to help us before. We were grateful. But in view of what I've seen and heard these past few minutes, I think it may be better for all of us if we part with you and your friends here. Yes, yes, yes. Jacob, you're right. Jacob. Yeah, Amy. This man's name, you say, is Mr. Sterling? Yeah, yeah. what says? Yes, that's my name. And these other two gentlemen? <laughs> gentlemen. Their names are Adams and... What's the name of the man with the bad arm? My name's Boswell. Why? Say, what he says? What are you getting at? Your horses have been tied onto our supply wagon and have been trailing along. I happen to look at your horse just now, Mr. Sterling. I don't know why. I just did. What about my horse? There are initials on the saddle different than any of yours. Huh? G.C. they are. Intent on the scene that was taking place, no one saw the masked man make his way from the underbrush to a spot behind the wagon that had screened his movements. Sterling, surprised at the turn in events, was like an animal at bay. He glanced significantly at Dewey Boswell and Case Adams as he spoke. Hey, uh, I don't know what you people are up to, talking and acting like this. Uh... Be up to nothing, Mr. Sterling. Take your money and your horses and leave us. It's better that way. Yes. You think so? And if we don't leave... We'll tell the sheriff or whoever one tells when we get to the town ahead. <laughs> what are you laughing at, you, you hyena? Because there is no town ahead. What? Case, hey, do it. Guns. They're drawing hey, guns. Hey, All right, cover them, Case. You too, do it. Forget about that arm. They, they have no guns handy. They don't believe in using them. But I do. Hey, hey, no. Too slow. Two shots flared from the Lone Ranger's gun almost together but each found a different target, the gun hands of Sterling and Ace. As Dewey Boswell turned to fire, Malvina Powell pushed his wounded shoulder. There! Grab that gun from him. Uh, give me it. I have it. It's a masked man again. <laughs> the masked one again. 
But you rode away. And came back in time. My hunch was right. Hunch? I'll tell you about it after we've tied up these men. Pick up their guns from the ground. Judging by all I heard and saw, these men are bank robbers. That money in the wagon was stolen from a bank? Yes. And the horse with the initial saddle undoubtedly belonged to George Clark, the bank president. Oh, look. Here comes men on horses. There's an Indian with them. It's Toto, and the riders are members of the posse. They were nearer than I thought. Hey, Sheriff! Sheriff Chatham heard the Lone Ranger's story together with that told by Jacob Smith. The evidence and the confession of Case Adams was complete. The sheriff and the posse prepared to lead the wagon train back over the mountain trail to a spot where it would reach the main trail easily. The Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted and waved goodbye to the pioneers. Then they rode off. Jasper, isn't he the handsomest man ever? That mask one? Mm, maybe. I know he's the best and fastest man I ever did see use a gun. Jasper, you were brave, too, oh. with the way you wanted to punch that robber when he grabbed me. And, Jasper, you called me girl. What? Did I? <clears throat> I must have been all excited. Hmm. All right. Jasper, do you think that masked man is married? Of course not. Didn't you hear what they call him? He is the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.